What up guys, good morning. It is Wednesday, February 14th, and we're just gonna go into the family kitchen. Family kitchen, I believe it's called. Um, local restaurant, local business owner. Uh, I've heard uh, I've heard a lot of things, so we're gonna go, uh, she's agreed to do a little bit of an interview. So we're gonna go say what's up. Oh, wow. Yo. <laughs> We might have to go. We might have to go to the member of parliament's office after this. Interesting. That's fantastic. So here we are. It's the old family kitchen. Family kitchen. Let's check it off. Cool. We just never know where the combo is going to go. How how long have you guys been been open here in Remington? Um, it's been sixteen years. Sixteen years. Yeah. yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. I've owned it myself for eight years now. Okay. So, but I've worked here since the beginning. So this has always been my part, my job. So the prices in Leamington, I've noticed, I've been here about a week, yeah. and it's like cr a crazy, the prices here are great compared okay. to like the rest of Ontario, like a, a reason, you guys? Um, it could be the type of restaurants, are you only eating in Leamington? Leamington? Yeah, pretty okay. much. So I've been to like Jose's, I've been to Jose's and Chuck's, so obviously. I'd okay, Jose's eat. would be a hell of a lot more pricier than us. Honestly, it's still cheap compared to my hometown. Really? Yeah, it's oh, crazy okay. to me. So Leamington has a reputation of, well, I shouldn't say reputation, but mm -hmm. we deal with a lot of the lower income people. Okay. We have a lot of the lower to middle class people, as opposed to, let's say, if you go 10 kilometers up the road to Kingsville, beautiful Kingsville, that's, they got fancy high-end restaurants. I saw some of those. And in there, do you mean you're going to... But that's where the wealth is, whether here. So, that's so you have to, if I were to charge more than what I charge, I would never survive because it's only the lower to middle class people that would be coming in here. That's all you're gonna get, get in a downtown core. You couldn't take a fancy restaurant and put it here. No, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Okay. Kingsville's where all the greenhouse owners that's where the money live. Is. Is. So yeah, yeah. pretty much anybody even in Leamington, if you're gonna go out for dinner and you want a classy dinner, yeah, yeah. no one's sticking around when you think. Your head and Damn. Yeah. I'm sticking around. I like the prices. <laughs> uh, are, are the greenhouses a good thing for the town? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If there were no greenhouses here, we'd be a ghost town. I, but I, okay. the thing though too with the greenhouses is most most sorry about this. Most white people don't want to work. There it is. Right? Yeah. So yeah. our our I would probably say fifty percent of Leamington's population, especially during the summer, would be migrant workers. I've noticed a like uh, vibrant Mexican color, the culinary scene yep, in town. Yep. There's like uh, really good tacos yep, and like. I mean, if you think about it, right? Leamington's and don't fault me on this. I think our population is about thirty thousand, thirty-five thousand, yeah. something like that. They're probably and I don't fault me on these numbers being actual, but there's probably twenty thousand migrant workers that come to this town every mm -hmm. for a good wow. eight-month period. So everything kind of uptown. It's huge, kind of from here on out with Finn Hope, it's all migrant territory. Kind of. right. You wouldn't catch a, a white person walking uptown and go buy a pair of shoes. No kidding. You just, you just don't. I w I'm going to go walk. <laughs> I mean, I have. <laughs> I have to do, but that's, um, yeah. But if it wasn't for that, Leamington would be nothing. So it's the migrant workers that are being employed by the greenhouses right. that are keeping our economy and leaving to alive. There they're is. the ones who's put the money back into it. I'm buying all the stuff from the shops uptown, right? So there's, I wonder, is that why there's so many OPP officers in this in this town? Uh, On the way here from Forest Street, I saw three three cops. Well, okay, so another thing too, <laughs> Leamington statistically, we have the highest um, lower income housing in probably we're probably in Ontario probably the top five place wow. per capita. Okay. Right. So per our population, the amount of gear tank of housing we have. Well when you have the lower class citizen gear tank of housing, you're also getting a lot of riffraff. Yeah. You get a lot of riffraff, which leads to a lot more crime, which leads to a higher presence of so, OPP. OPP higher presence is not nothing to migrant workers. Fair. Migrant workers are not mischief. I mean, of course, there's going to be a bad apple, right? Yeah. In, in every bunch. But for the most part, the migrant workers, they're here to work. Mm -hmm. They make money and send it home. They don't want to fuck, it. fuck that up. They right? don't because they know quick they're out of the country yet, too. Yeah. Like, right. So for the most part, migrant workers, but it can still be intimidating, especially if you're a woman. Sure. Right? You know what I mean? Because they... There are males. It's mainly all males that come over, right? For the absolutely, yeah. Can be so they have a reputation of as being like, oh, do you know what I mean? Like, like on a Thursday evening, you wouldn't go shopping, even though let's say at Walmart or, or Food Basics, because Thursday would be payday for the migrant workers. They would it's be bus uh, in town. You know, so I noticed that the, the taxis busing. and the buses yeah. sitting outside the grocery store. Yep. Yeah, so that would be the migrant okay. workers coming in from their greenhouse because the greenhouse owner. Got the little bunks. I saw. Yeah, they give them bunks and everything and whatnot. Well, right. when it's their payday, they give them transportation to town. 
around. They don't just have for a few hours or whatnot. Because they were too much shopping. What was going on That's there? What's okay. So what? So what are you guys able to do for some of these uh, lower income people here at the restaurant here, fam? Uh, so we offer a program called a meal ticket program. Yeah. Um. So our meal ticket program is open to everybody and anybody with no questions asked. Um, why we leave that is no questions asked. So something such as yourself, you ask such as yourself. Yeah. I could have watched you get out of, let's say, your Dodge Ram pickup truck and walk in here, and I would still allow you to have a meal ticket. Yeah. Because why we help, I want to help everybody. Somebody doesn't have to be all the way homeless with nothing in order to be able to qualify for food. Let's say you are a working citizen. Let's say, I mean, you are working two jobs. Yeah. Um, I don't know, you got your truck payment and you got your rent and who knows now, you got child support in there somewhere sure. too. All your money went to that. So you, you, you're not homeless because all your money went to your rent. That's right. You're not lazy, you are working, there's only so many hours in a day. Do you pay rent, keep the roof over your head or do you buy yourself food? It's amazing. Right? So, and then we really just try to instill in people on just that kindness is, is a thing and be down on your luck and well, you could be having a bad week either you're you know? straight up yeah and then to just pay, pay it forward like it's called a pay it forward meal ticket program it's great so with the instill in, to instill in somebody okay i give you something to eat no big deal thank you just pay it forward yeah it doesn't have to be today it doesn't have to be tomorrow it doesn't even have to be with money yeah pay it forward do something kind to the next person just so you know, everyone I've talked to around town says that this place they support and really appreciate what you've done specifically. Awesome. So awesome. just so you know that. Good to know. And um, I did notice you're connected to the member of parliament's <laughs> offices. Yeah. What was it you said? You, he doesn't come in here too often. No, I don't know he? him. No. We don't. We I, don't know you. I don't uh, know what's his name? Him. Ed. I think his name was no. Ed. I can't uh, even remember. I just walked by. We're yeah, gonna. I did too. We're gonna go over there after this. I'm gonna go over there and see if I can get a little meeting with him. Yeah. I see. You said he came through during election year last. What, well, last all, in all, politi all politicians during election season want to make sure they, they like to go. Their to all hair the, is parted perfectly. They like to and go, they, yeah, yeah. They go to all the restaurants and they have a little breakfast. Politicians for you, right? And then yeah. where are they after the got in, right? They're in Ottawa doing whatever the hell they want. Well, they're sending all our money to Ukraine. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that something that gets brought up here a lot? Like stuff um, like that? Or are people kind of focused just on their own lives here? I, I, I really, I like kind of like when you were in here yesterday, kind of a little bit, I, I, what would my wording be? I diminish certain talks. For sure. Because we're not going to get anywhere with it. It's a good attitude. Why, why waste our energy? Why waste our time? Yeah. Why let our blood pressure go up just to be bitching <laughs> about somebody else that we have no power over? So I just, when it comes to that, all you can do is try and be, you know. Just remind uh, people to pay, pay cash. Because if you pay cash, <laughs> government ain't getting it. So, I want to ask you about the chickens that you had. Yeah. If that's okay. Sure. So, you had, you had some chickens. Obviously, I think a lot of people, I know a lot of my followers, they talk, they tell me I'm stupid for not having chickens. Oh, like, yeah. on a daily basis. Yeah. And I, I will, as soon as I can, I'm going to get some chickens. What happened to your chickens? Well, there's a bylaw in Leamington that you can't have chickens. Um, well, I just went ahead and I got myself some chickens and yeah. I had them in my backyard for quite a few months. My neighbors were all content with it. Um, I gave everybody eggs. My neighbors are older. They love to watch the chickens. <laughs> they were great for my kids, teach my kids responsibility. Sure. And no, we got a fancy drone here in Leamington that drives around so I can oh, see things. Oh, I so, haven't seen the Leamington yeah. drone so yet. They, they, I had chickens. They see my chickens in my backyard. So I got a letter on my... On my mailbox telling me to get rid of my chickens. I ignored the letter at first until bylaw come knocking a few days later. And if I didn't have my chickens removed by the said date, they would then remove them and also charge me $20,000. 20K. Uh, that is the most dystopian shit I've heard in a long time. But they drone, the they sniped it out with a yeah. drone and then came again. That is George Orwell come to fruition, my friends. Yeah. I have gone to court 87 times during COVID. I have spent an arm and a leg on multiple lawyers, multiple lawyers. I like to, I can say confidently, I, I understand the court system. Yeah, um, I yeah can, no doubt. I've been to court enough through COVID that I feel I could represent myself. When you are a person and you are a little person, and I'm not meaning physically, I mean somebody without, I know what you mean. without some big fancy last name That's and having right. this behind you, That's right. you're nobody. Yeah. Unfortunately. In the eyes of the courts. Yeah. You're nobody. So I knew I didn't have a leg to stand on. So you win. Chickens are gone. Chickens are gone. Chickens are gone. But hey, I still sell farm fresh eggs. Excellent. Yes, I still okay. sell eggs. You mentioned you were in court a bunch. Like, did the government try and find you for anything else? 
and they well, during COVID. Yeah. Yes. And how much was that fine? I was originally charged. Well, there were multiple charges, but altogether it came to two point one million a year in two jail minus point, a day. Two point one million a year in jail. Yeah, is what I was charged with. For trying to help feed low-income families and I'm trying to keep it, yeah, trying to feed my own children. And feed I, I'm self. a yeah. sole provider of three children. This is actually my youngest son that's sitting here. What's um, up, buddy? Yeah, good yeah. for you. Yep. You're you're a warrior, and I can promise you, uh, you got a lot of people that are gonna watch this. You just gotta do what you gotta do to survive. And this is one of those things I told everybody through that, regardless if somebody agrees with my decisions during COVID or not or what. If you were in a position where you had and you had to feed your family, you're going hungry, and your children are about to go hungry. If any parent would do whatever you need to do to feed your kids. Some of us are lucky. Some people are lucky to never have to make that choice. Yeah, but if you're faithful by choice, you got to do yeah. what you got to do to survive. What did you do when they went? So you told me about something yesterday where you switched up the business at one point. Yeah, I tried. I tried to come with a, a few different loopholes. Um, tried to just get smart and creative every time different lockdowns or different colors and all yeah, that yeah, stuff with yeah, yeah, the red and, yeah the red alerts and all yeah, that yeah i switched from a restaurant to a store and then a grocery store and I then think, i think that's brilliant i think that's a very badass move and uh yeah you adapt or die i think we Straight said up, yesterday yeah, so yeah. that's what you did and i it, it breaks my heart that uh they put you through that shit, honestly and, and while you may not have a leg to stand on in the judicial system just know just from what I've talked about, the community, you got a lot of legs to stand on. So I think, I think that's what we got to try and focus on moving forward. The world is becoming increasingly alarming. Uh, you know, not to be that guy, not to be a dude. <laughs> there's definitely some concerning stuff uh -huh. going on. Um, we got to stick together. That, that's exactly that's it. it. People, people need to come. You need to. You need to build your network. You need to have your support system. You need. You need to have your people. You need to have your tribe. 100%. You can't, a, a wolf cannot survive by itself. They're in fact for a reason. Yep. Every every animal of the animal kingdom is the same as humans. We need people, we, you, need, you, need your, you need your niche. Thank you so much for, for talking to me today Hello. and sharing. And I can promise you, you're gonna have a lot of people um, that have your back. Awesome. hundred percent. Thank you. Is there anything else you want is there anything else we should say about Leamington before I go? Or any, anything else I should do while I'm in Leamington? I'm here for two more days. Have you been to Point Peely? No. Okay. See, I'm a, I'm a nature person. So I, I get out love there. being outside, okay. and okay. especially the sun was shining. It's not a crappy day out. It's a little bit cool. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, check out Point Peely. It's, Take my guy. I got a Labrador. So oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. You're there. in Leamington. You got to okay. say you've been to the most southernest point. Into the point. Oh yeah, it's the most. That's I keep forgetting yeah, that's yeah. the most southern point in Canada. Yep. This town's so crazy, man. This town has a weird history to it <laughs> that I don't think yeah. a lot of people realize. Um, if you're in Leamington, come to the Family Kitchen. I. Leamington, then it's politicians, you know, we don't all see eye to eye, but Leamington, though, I don't want to knock it. I, yeah. do, I do love Leamington. Leamington is, is a great place. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's small, but yet big enough where you have everything, but small enough where you know everybody. People can walk through my restaurant and I know people by their first name basis. I'm, I'm and, picking you know, up how, on How's Bob doing or how's Aunt Shirley or, right? So, but yet we're big enough. That's so good to hear. Right, so. That's one of the biggest things I say uh, is that one of the biggest problems right now is people don't know their neighbors anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, they know they maybe have them on Facebook, but they don't know their neighbors, yeah, yeah. and they don't know their neighbors on a first name basis. And that's what we got to get back to. Yep, that's it. All right, look, I won't take up any more of your time. Oh, <laughs>